What's up guys? Today we got a pretty cool video for you guys and it's something that's been asked a million times on this channel. What is the difference between each Power Pro model? Well, what better way to answer those questions than the guys from Power Pro? Obviously they're here in the studio today and they're going to cover all these topics for you. They're going to explain the differences between each model and what makes them different than the previous model before it. We're going to have a couple of video series in this and they're going to discuss how to use a power probe, how to make sure you're using it safely and what are the functions of each one and what, how is it going to help you as a mechanic. Um, I've had a lot of guys kind of concerned about buying a power probe, afraid they're going to burn something up and they're going to answer these questions today. So Jeff and Dave are here. We're going to turn it over to them and let these guys show you everything you need to know about a power probe. So let's get started. So yes, there is some confusion with all the different power probe models. So let's hopefully straighten that out. Um, everybody's probably familiar with the power probe three. It's been around the longest. Uh, it is like it said, power probe number three, but it is the first one that actually had a digital voltage display on it. Um, the functions it can do pretty much uh, checking positives, like a test light function, checking grounds. Obviously, all power probes are famous for being able to apply power and ground, so you can activate components right from the tool. Um, the power probe 3 and the 3EZ are functionally identical. They do the same functions, the same test. We just thought we would update the 3, give it a nicer new display, easier to read, and added a menu whoops, to get to the different test modes. All those test modes were actually in the Power Probe 3. A lot of people weren't aware of it. They'd never bothered cracking open the owner's manual. I'm guilty of that myself many times. But <laughs> there are different tests that you can do, such as min capture, uh, max capture. Uh, it'll read peak to peak voltage. It's not a true AC meter because it doesn't read anything negative, but it will read pulses like five volt pulses, things that we deal with in the automotive world like wheel sensors, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, these two are the same tool and their primary function is the DC voltmeter and applying power and ground. The next two are also kind of similar. We have the Power Probe 4 and our newest one, the Power Probe Maestro. These are the more advanced tools. These, I say, are like taking a quality multimeter and putting it inside your power probe. You've got more multimeter functions. You've got DC voltage, you've got AC voltage, resistance, frequency, all those multimeter functions built in here, plus a couple of specialized tests. There's a, a mode for testing computer driver outputs safely and a mode for testing fuel injector circuits quickly. And I'll demonstrate those later. Um, but let me show you a couple of the major differences. Even in the basic DC mode, you already have min max. Let me kill that speaker. You already have things like min max on the bottom of the display. So no reason to pull up separate modes like you would in the Power Probe 3. Uh, there are two different AC modes. Your normal AC RMS, you guys heard that term RMS or true RMS. That's the way a standard meter reads. And what it does is it averages the signal. So for example, here, this little test point, I've got a five volt pulse coming out. Now, if it spends half the time at five volts and half the time at zero volts as it's pulsing, an RMS reading is going to average that. Whoops. And there we are, 2.48, right about two and a half volts, right in the middle of that five volt pulse. That's how your standard meter reads. But in the Power Pro 4, you have an optional AC mode called peak to peak. So if you want to know the true peak to peak voltage of whatever signal you're measuring, there's my five volt pulse. So you have two different AC options. That's kind of unique. Let me turn this off. 
Um, this is our ohm meter mode. It's called feed test. The reason we don't call it ohm meter, it can do some things a standard ohm meter can't. Um, now, if I just want to check resistance of a component or a circuit, I'll use the ground lead as the second lead, and that works just exactly like a regular ohm meter. But what is unique is I can tap into a circuit with voltage on it. You're either going to get a red or a green light, depending on which side of the circuit you're on, the power side or the ground side. Whoops, excuse me. But then that resistance reading is from battery positive to wherever you're at. I can add some resistance here so you can see what. If it's anything over 10 ohms resistance, you're not going to get the light. It's telling you you got a big problem there. <laughs> anything less than 10 ohms, you'll get the, either the red or green, green light. But I'm able to actually take resistance measurements in a live circuit with power on it. I don't know of another ohm meter that can do that. And you may notice at the bottom of the screen, it's got battery and tip voltage. So you can compare and see if there's voltage drop in the circuit at the same time. Let's go to... Uh, this mode is for frequency. That one's pretty simple. Whoops. Wrong button. It's going to show you the frequency of any signal you're on. Plus positive and negative pulse widths on the bottom of the screen. Um, that's pretty much the meter modes. I'll show you one of the popular test modes in this tool is the fuel injector mode. Uh, this makes fuel injector testing really quick and easy. So this makes fuel injector, this is the fuel injector mode in the Power Probe 4. It makes fuel injector testing really quick. All I need to do is back probe into the injector, ground side, control side circuit. And a lot of people, if you're not aware, every one of these Power Probes, this tip comes out and it's a standard four millimeter banana jack connector, just like all your multimeter leads. So for fuel injecting testing, you're probably gonna want some sort of extension and a back probe to get into that injector. Um, I'm just going to use my little test point, but all you need to do is back probe in the injector circuit, like I said. You're going to get all this. Noid light action up here. If you want the speaker to go along with it, that does it too. I've, I've caught intermittent dropouts because I could hear him on that speaker and I wouldn't necessarily see it on the noid light action. So that speaker function is actually valuable. But it's actually giving you four pieces of information on the screen. I've got the supply voltage to the injector, the ground voltage from the computer driving it. Over on this side, we have the inductive kick voltage. If you're not familiar, any coiled winding will produce big inductive kick voltage every time it's shut off. That number is different from car to car. It's usually between 60 and 90 volts, but it should be similar cylinder to cylinder, like a compression test. If the windings are starting to go bad, that inductive kick number starts dropping. And last, uh, you've got the on time of that injector. So four pieces of valuable fuel injector information with one quick back probe. I can run down a row of injectors, compare the readings real quick. You know, if one's radically different readings, you've got a problem with that one. That's pretty much the modes in the Power Probe 4. So like I said, compared to the three, it's more like a multimeter packed into your Power Probe. Some other differences on the four that you may not be aware of, this is a sealed housing. A lot more water and weatherproof than, than either of the threes. Um, I'd get technical support calls from people that work in the marine field on boats. They love using power probes because they've got generally fiberglass bodies with, that don't ground, so they love the being attached to the battery. But if they dropped it in the bottom in the bilge, chances are it wasn't going to survive. But this one's a sealed housing, a lot more, a lot tougher, and a lot weather, more weather and dust proof. And another difference on this tool, if you trip the circuit breaker, this one's self-resetting. You just wait a second or two, it'll reset. <laughs> Unlike there's a reset tab on the Power Probe 3. So these are automatic resetting. So that's the biggest difference between the threes and the four. Okay, and our newest Power Probe and our most powerful, the Maestro, takes everything the four does, all the multimeter functions, 
they're all there. Your DC volts, your resistance, your AC modes, your frequency. It's got the fuel injector testing, but notice now it's also Bluetooth. So anything I got going on on this screen will mirror out to an app that you can have on your phone or tablet. So anything you do on the tool display will mirror on an app that you can have your, on your phone or tablet. And the other big difference, let's go to an AC mode. Any screen where you see this arrow in the upper right hand corner, you have two display options. I can either display the readings, frequency, duty cycle, pulse widths, or if I hit the up arrow on the tool, now it's actually displaying We'll do this one. On the tool, you've got the waveform displayed. And again, that all transfers out to an app. You can do recordings over time. You can do screenshots, play back your recordings later, store them, that kind of thing. So the biggest difference between the four and the Maestro, uh, you got all the full-on multimeter fu functions, plus the Bluetooth, plus the graphing right in the tool and, and on, the, on the app. All right, guys, so hopefully that covers any questions that you may have from the Power Probe Easy all the way up through the Maestro. And that way you guys will help, you know, make your decision on which one's right for you. And we're going to do some more series on how to safely use a Power Probe in different situations and how it works. And also cover some new Power Probe products that you may not even know exist. Like always, guys, thanks for watching the channel. If you like it, be sure to hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, click that button. It's totally free. You'll never know what you're going to see. You guys have a great week. We'll catch you next time.